It's pretty uh, smoky out here today. Hope all you guys by those fires are uh, safe and sound. It's uh, British Columbia, Canada here, so you can see how far the smoke's come. All those fires in the States there. But anyways. Uh, got this big old dry piece of arbutus wood I gotta take in the shop and maybe carve a wood spirit on it, I think. So I'll get that in there. Yep. No! Okay guys, so this piece, this is a piece of Arbutus. I think it said, I just kind of looked it up what it's related to. It's related to the Madrone family or whatever. But um, yeah, so this grew in Tuas in British Columbia, Canada. But these Arbutus trees, are basically like uh, all over Vancouver Island, um, like uh, Long Beach, Tofino. The whole beach is uh, the the beach lines kind of with these trees, and they're all bent from the wind, right? Because they're because the other side of uh, Tofino is like Japan or China, or whatever. So, but this was a locally grown tree, which is pretty rare for uh, because they need they like to grow in rocky areas, like really acidy areas. But this is a pretty fairly hard wood, guys. You can see the grain here. So yeah, it's a fairly hard wood. But you know, like chainsaw carving hard wood is a lot different than carving with your cut saw and your little dremels and stuff like that. Because if your chainsaw blades are sharp, well, you're just going to cut through this stuff like butter. Okay? So it's not a very big carving. It's going to be a wood spirit here. This is a paid-for piece, so a commission piece. I get a little bit not nervous, but... I, I, I'm not really a big fan of doing commission pieces because you want then well I am and I'm not because when it's commissioned you you want to try harder to make it real nice for them but just like when I'm carving something for myself like that eagle or something or whatever I don't care I'll carve it the way I want to carve it but she said she'd like a wood spirit in here and they got a nice big beautiful house and they can mount it in their garden or something I will drill a hole in the bottom there so they can put it in the ground put rebar up in it bang rebar into the ground so it's sticking like six inches out of the ground. Then they can put it there and lean it against something, right? Because you can see this thing's all twisty. So anyways, let me get uh, carving. I'll do a time lapse, maybe a talk through on the carving. And um, yeah, so I talk too much in these videos. I don't talk that much in real life, actually. It's just easy to talk in these videos because I don't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> I'm just talking to myself. <laughs>
Okay guys, so I'm not too sure how that's going to show up in the time lapse thing, but I'll try and do a talk through on that. So you can see here I got it all. He's got a long mustache, comes all the way down and comes down here. I gave this part extra deep here. So if the water comes here, it comes down here and it can ex escape down here. I always kind of think about that type of thing for outdoor pieces. So you can see his nose. Put our center line back in here. So his the bridge of his nose is pretty thin. And his nose is pretty short actually. But it's okay. Because, let me try and explain this. See how I took this all back? Because you got to look at a human face. And a human face is, um, let's see here. It's like, uh, okay, so let's do a little sketch. So that, that would be his nose, whatever, right? And then the eye, eye, eye would be there. And the lip, whatever that is. But you can see it's, it's angled on a triangle, right? Nose is out, not that much of a pitch. Just a little bit of a pitch. So you can see here, that's what I was trying to do, right? That comes out. And that goes back in. Okay, so I still got to take these eyebrows down a bit more. I think I'm going to make this nose a little bit longer. Not much. Okay, and his eyebrows are going to come down. My freaking scribbling. Okay, so I got my Mampa tools here, so I'm going to use the Mampa tools. But um, I think I'm going to do a little bit more. Um, that took me 11 minutes guys I timed it so just just so you know right okay so let's see here what am I gonna do next I think I'm gonna cut the eyes out just a little shallow little cut in there with my chainsaw with the dime tip I'll take some of this bottom off so the eyebrows are raised higher than the cheekbones and um, yeah we'll just kind of play it by ear I guess Okay, so you can see here I got most of blocking done out, right? So before I get carried away, I'm going to hook up my, uh, I'm going to start carving with this uh, old school die grinder. I got a newer Makiti one, but I like this one. It's got the cuts all bit there, guys. Okay, so I'm going to start uh, shaping out the eye sockets, the mouth, kind of just rounding everything off, give them some eyebrows. And uh, yeah, fourth thing, you can see how the nose almost sticks, the, well, it does. It sticks off the farthest. Okay. Okay, so you can see this guy's uh, taking shape. Well, he looks like an old wood spirit, all right. 
Um, okay, so now you guys, you guys know how much I love my Dremels, but this wind tool has been holding up pretty good. It's half the price, but it's just got the Dremel flex shaft on it, okay? So um, I don't know if I'm going to give this guy pupils because, well, I don't do the best pupils. And when I do the pupils, it kind of looks cartoony. So I'm not too sure about that. But what I'm going to do now, you guys, some my Amazon store too. These are aluminum cutting bits, right? Okay. So I'm going to do this. It's like my beard hairs on my wood spirits at home. And I'm going to give them some eyebrows now, okay? So I won't film that, but I'm just going to give them, I mean, yeah, eyebrows. Eyebrow hairs. Damn it. And I'm going to do under here too, because when I pull out my Mampa tools, it can't get under there, so. And I'm going to give them age lines too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do a whole bunch. Yeah. Okay, guys. So you guys, you can see the detail I gave them with that uh, aluminum cutter. Eyebrows, age lines up here, age lines under the eyes, uh, underneath the bottom lip here, and on the cheeks a bit. Just to, uh, I don't want to take the mampet cutter too close to here because I could cut the bottom lip or I could cut up in the nose. So it's just a safety thing, right? You guys, they do make these aluminum cutters for, um, for your die grinders. You see? I love these cutters on edge. Uh, so they do make them quarter inch. I think I got some in my Amazon store below in the description. Okay, so um, now this part here. So you see how it's kind of his beard kind of comes down and I cut in here. Now I don't know if I cut that too deep. I could cut that out and make it all flat in here. But I, I said to myself, well, I could cut it out in like a minute. Like make it all smooth there. But I said, I'll make this side of his beard come down here and then it will come in here and fold under. Whoa, fucking bee. Where's that bee going? Land on me? Jesus. There it is, look. Oh, okay, anyways. So this beard's gonna come down here and then this one's gonna tuck, tuck in there, right? So this one will come down here and tuck underneath this beard. This beard's gonna come down here and this one will tuck in. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. It's about an hour carving so far for me, guys. Okay, so I just pulled out the Mampa tools. You guys can go to the Mampa site if you want to figure out how to get these tools. www.mampatools.com Since 1988. They're from Korea. They're Korean tools, guys, and they're actually really great tools. And um, I support them 100%. But a tool like this on a die grinder, a little flap, flap one there. Look at this cutter. Okay, there's three of them on here. One, two, three. If this cutter hits you, you are going to the, you are going to the hospital. I don't care. You know, I, I talk lots, like if this hits you, you're going to the hospital. I talk lots about wearing your safety gloves and stuff, guys, but I'm not gonna be wearing my safety gloves because I like to have a grip on this mother sucker when I'm, when I'm using this tool. And every second that I'm using this tool, I'm reminding myself that I'm re using this tool. You know, when you use the normal die grinders or your Dremels and stuff like that, you can let your mind wind, uh, wander. If you get hit, you get a little scrape, you, you tape it up and you continue. This, you stop, you go to the hospital. So every second that I'm using this tool, I'm reminding myself that this tool is in my hand and, and grip the freaking tool good, guys, and don't let it go because, anyways, what I'm going to do is all the beard hairs now. Whoosh.
Hey guys, that was like five minutes tops. But look how smooth that thing cuts. So smooth you can see the grain. But like I said guys, dangerous tool. Be careful if you're gonna get those tools. And be used to having like a grinder in your hand. You know, I've worked with grinders my whole life, so. Okay, so. When I've worked with Arbutus before, the last time I worked with it was just a w little wood spirit. I made a video way back, like last year. It was, uh, I, I did a flower and a skull. A couple flowers and a couple skulls, but the wood was so punky. Not punky, uh, had, uh, yeah, we'll call it half punky. Three, a quarter punky. But when I carved it, when I burnt it, it burnt all the, de everything just melted. So I think I'm just gonna, from my experience with this, this is a solid piece of wood, guys, okay? But my experience with this, I'm not gonna give it a deep burn. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lightly hit it with a friggin' torch, and then I will uh, sand it, okay? I'm still not 100% about his eyes. I might car re carve his eyes deeper or something. I don't know, we'll see. See what it looks like after I burn it. Because after, this wood's so hard too. After you burn it, it's hard to get the burn off of it if it's a, with my sander, right? So, I, okay, so I burn it, then it's, it's burnt so hard on there, it's really hard to get the burn off of it. If that makes any sense. I don't know. Whatever, Jordy. Just shut up and carve. I gotta charge it. I hope my charge is here. I'm burning the mouth really good. But this, I'll just lightly hit it. Okay, so I, <laughs> I ended up burning it a little bit too much, but that's okay. Look, I didn't burn there, just kind of give it a different texture when they put the sealant on it. Um, I kind of lost the chin, because I just cut too much, too deep with the mampa. But anyways, so now I'm, I got this Peter Blair mandrel on here. Uh, it's a 3 8 with this belt sanding sandpaper. And here comes the dirty job. Okay, I didn't get too dirty today. <laughs> okay, guys, so there it is so far. Um, I'm not really too sure about those eyes. I'm, I think I'm gonna try and I'm gonna recarve it, recarve them better. Um, yeah, I gotta fix up the eyes. Okay, so here you go. You guys, you can do eyes all different sorts of ways, right? These ones are more like uh, the Japanese oni eyes. I could draw like a carve a little ring in like a you know a little line down there to make it so it like you'd see the whatever okay so there's that guy done what I got to do now is I got to cut this bottom flat and drill a hole up in there so they can mount they'll be able to mount it on uh, rebar or whatever they want to pile into the ground and uh, I painted this part black too whatever Spook, this guy looks like he's Halloween, right Halloween time. <laughs> Look at this guy when I got him laying down. He's like looking over here saying, Jordy, what are you doing? What are you doing down there? Well, buddy, what I'm doing down here. I got the speed bit on. 
I'm drilling the hole up into you so they can put on friggin' rebar! Okay guys, so that's a wrap for today. You can see it's basically self-standing now. Cut the bottom flat. Um, yeah, so once he gets a piece of rebar, and you can put a branch behind it too, like with a, you know, a split, a crotch in it, and mount it up there too. So they're gonna ask me if they should protect it or do whatever, put a coat on it. And I'm gonna say, well, you know, our butis wood, the, the more it weathers, it goes black. If you guys see a real piece of black wood on the beach, there's a good chance it's uh, arbutus wood because well, that it just goes black when it, it weathers. So you don't have to put something on uh, everything, right? Like a protective. So I'm gonna say I wouldn't do it if I was them. This is the piece that I cut off the bottom. So you can see actually the growth rings on this arbutus tree. It's usually a real s slow growing tree, but uh, you can see the growth rings right here. So that's a, a year of the tree's life. So it grew pretty quick. Wait, anyways, that's it. That's it for today. Hope everybody's good. And um, sign your pieces, guys. Sign it! Oh, boy, I got to get back here and finish these and carve another 20 billion more still. Oh, boy.